Hi, I'm Chilton Webb, and in this video I'm going to show you how easy it is to print something in 3D using Lightwave 11.5 uh, or earlier, and, uh, and a plugin from liberty3d.com called Export STL. So here is our cassette tape. Um, if we look at the little thing down here in the bottom, we'll notice that the dimensions are 100 millimeters by uh, uh, 65 millimeters. Okay, and that's good because that's the size that a um, cassette tape should be. So this is is currently in correct world or, uh, coordinates and, and dimensions. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, if we take a look at our display options um, under units, the default unit is meters. Okay, this is important. Just remember what it is. If it's if it's set to something else, um, please move it to either millimeters or meters. Okay, and now we're going to go to the L script, which is you go to utilities and then click on L script. This is to load at one time. You can use the other commands to add it to the interface if you wanted to, but in this case we're just going to open this, it's called export STL, and it looks like this. <coughs> okay, so we have uh, an export path here at the top, and we're going to, we, I've named it awesome tape, okay, and the default unit that we just saw, uh, we set, had it set to meters, I just specify here that it's also meters, that's the default setting. So here are some notes real quick. Save before using because geometry can change. Uh, this plugin does some things to your geometry to test it and to pre prepare it for 3D printing and for export. It, undo it undoes everything that it does, or at least it tries to, but it's entirely possible that it can screw something up. So make sure you save it first. Uh, also keep all of your objects on layer one if you want to print. And the last thing is we assume that the printer where we're going to print this thing is using a base unit of millimeters. This is important. We'll just remember this for a few minutes because uh, it'll come back here. And <clears throat> if you have any problems, please email me at chiltonweb at gmail.com. This is a, a rewrite of the old STL export. So this is called SPL, STL export version 2.0. Uh, we hit OK. This will work on Mac and PC, by the way. Uh, should be no difference there. OK, and now we want to go to a website that lets us um, uh, print things in 3D, like Craftworks. Upload a model, and we're going to select our tape. And it's going to upload it, blammo, and give it a second, and it's going to put this into a 3D view thing for us. There it is, and it says only going to cost us $569,000. Right? Well, that's maybe a little more expensive than you are hoping. So, the reason is, uh, you can't really tell too well here, but the reason is because it's, it's assuming that we're basing this in inches, and we're not. We're basing, we're, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's assuming that it needs to print this in inches. This is the printer um, default unit I was referring to earlier. If you recall, in the L script it says, assumes printer base unit is in millimeters. So, over here we click on millimeters. Okay, and that's all you have to do. And at this point, it is correct. Uh, this, if this seems a little expensive, well, it's 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 a uh, kind of expensive to print stuff in 3D. Um, they have this uh, fire glaze ceramic that's uh, even cheaper if you are really just looking for some uh, you know, cheap way to print this. Um, you also can get multicolored sandstone. Uh, you can get this printed in 10K yellow gold for a mere eight grand. <coughs> Okay, and you're pretty much done. You hit save and then you go pay for it and they, they send it to you. If you're expecting something more complicated than that, um, that's all there is to it. So there. Um, let me think. Anything else that you might want to know? When you um, prepare your model, um, make sure that it's solid throughout and make sure that there are no internal faces. If there is an internal uh, face, it, the exporter won't be able to catch it, but the printing app or the printing software might say, "Hey, that's not printable." Okay, so they have to make sure there are no internal faces. That uh, basically, you know, you want to make sure that inside your your um, polygons here somewhere, you don't have any, uh, uh, you know, like there's a, a polygon inside this that's a completed polygon. You want to make sure that it's basically just a solid object uh, straight through. One easy way to do that is to flip the normals. And then look for any internal geometry that doesn't also face outward somewhere. 
So all these holes are extruded, so they're, they're fine. And I don't see any other internal geometry, otherwise it would have screamed at us. <coughs> okay, um, let's see. Oh, also two-point polys. If there are any two-point polys, the, uh, uh, the script will now throw an error. So let me show you what that looks like. If you have, for example, there, okay? Uh, and you run this. Okay, <coughs> all right, and it will say, hey, one or two point polys detected, please get rid of these and try again, and it will highlight them, okay? So you just hit delete, and then you print it again, and you're good. Ta-da! Um, yeah, that's all there is to it. Um, play around with it, take some of your models, try scaling them down so they're kind of tiny, you know, uh, and print them out, and let me know what you think.